The Phillips Collection is a small private art museum tucked away in the heart of downtown Washington. It's been open to the public since 1921. It was originally the home of Duncan Phillips, a passionate collector who transformed his boyhood home into the first museum of modern art in America. After a fire last year damaged the museum, it reopened in January, just in time for its 90th anniversary. Over 6,000 people stood in line to see the renovated galleries and the cakes that were created for the opening, edible art inspired by some of the museum's greatest works. Uh, Dorothy Kaczynski is director of the museum. She says one of the charms of the museum is its intimate setting. It has a narrow focus compared to other big civic museums that include Egyptian art and European art and um, you know, pre-Columbian art. Here it really is Duncan Phillips's vision of um, great modernist and by and large painting. The museum's big draws include priceless masterpieces by French Impressionists, such as Renoir's Luncheon of the Boating Party. I think that's probably the, you know, the most beloved work in, in the collection. It's a masterwork of, of high Impressionism. Another draw is an entire room of paintings by abstract expressionist Mark Rothko, who died in 1970. The first grouping that he anointed, he the artist, and he instructed Phillips as, as to how to hang them and the lighting conditions and sort of the austerity of this very almost spiritual environment. And there's the Migration series by Jacob Lawrence. Phillips was a real champion of African-American artists uh, long before that became um, a fashion. And actually, I think the Phillips collection played a very interesting positive role in Washington, D.C., when this was still quite a segregated city. And it's this um, complex and wonderful narrative of the uh, migration of the blacks from rural south to urban north and the, um, the um, difficulties of that kind of wrenching, a profound change in life. Kaczynski says Phillips wanted to juxtapose great European paintings with American artists to prove that the Americans were equally important. The American modernist Arthur Dove was basically kept alive, I would say, by frequent purchases every year. I think Phillips had a kind of a right of first refusal. He was constantly bringing works by Arthur Dove into the collection. Dove's Flour Mill II inspired abstract painter Sam Gilliam to create a site-specific work for the museum's main stairwell for its 90th anniversary. Another new installation coinciding with the museum's anniversary includes two massive etchings titled As Time Goes By by British painter Sir Howard Hodgkin. They are really incredible just in terms of their complexity, their beauty, their explosive power. They are among the largest etchings ever made, each measuring 12 square meters. They are mirror images of each other, but in different colors. He was trying to achieve a monumental, powerful, ambitious um, uh, statement, a work of art that kind of, um, in a way, almost defies death. Displaying Impressionist masterpieces alongside bold contemporary pieces is just one reason Kozinski believes the Phillips collection is unique and appreciated. So people come and really, I think, feel at home here and really engage and, and it's I think it's a powerful um, force of you know it's uh, goodness knows the world needs the you know salubrious impact of art in our lives. With treasures both old and new the Phillips collection is committed to fulfilling its founders vision of bold exploration within a warm and intimate setting. Julie Tabo VOA News, Washington.